well, a lot of theatre in the UK and some in the US as well. Um, I think the imbalance between um, actors and directors is uh, is certainly common to both the countries I now know best. I think it may have something to do with human nature. Maybe directing is a job people weren't meant to do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, historic. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not I'm not being anti-director here, but historically, the theatre got along without directors for centuries. So they obviously they're not quite essential. Uh, and it's the hardest job of all because really it depends on filling in the holes that everybody has left or moving everybody around, and I don't just mean, don't just mean blocking of actors either, moving everybody around, all the elements around to the best advantage. Uh, and I will say, um, before moving here, I was a fairly regular visitor, but I, I can find most of my theatre going, I suppose, to trips to Stratford or the occasional um, big show in Toronto. Uh, my impression is, looking back, that things have, in terms of acting, things have improved immensely. I think the overall standard of acting I remember at Stratford is being pretty bland. And I am referring to the Robin Phillips years when there was Maggie Smith and Brian Bedford and Bill Hart and Martha Henry and practically nobody else. And I think the overall standard you now get at Stratford, at Shaw, at Soul Pepper, and, all, and most of, the, most of the, the major small, if you can be major and small, institutional theatres in Toronto um, is much better than I would ever have expected. Now, maybe there was a lot of good stuff going on that I missed when I was a tourist, but that's just my impression. The overall standard has improved. Um, I, mean, I couldn't. When I, when, I, when I saw the Salt Pepper production of Turn Off some years ago, I was nearly crying. There was so much good acting going on on that stage, and I thought this is something I would actually be prepared, were I in the export business, to pick up and, and just take over to London and let them look at. And that uh, that happens surprisingly often, all things considered. I don't mean I see very many great shows here any more than I see many great shows anywhere else. But in terms of, in terms of acting, as, 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 as Richard said, um, we're fine. Now, in terms of playwriting. Well, it's another very rare talent. Um, Peter Hall once said years ago, um, when you scream, at, he was talking about the English theatre, but when he said when, when, when you scream at the, the lack of um, playwrights in England, of new playwrights, he said, we should remind, remind ourselves how, what a very rare bird a good new play is. A decade that produces two is lucky. But that's in the perspective of history. I think if we're looking for plays that will just keep us happy for an evening when we see them, they, they may not seem so fresh a year from now, but at least a are good for now. Even by that rather more lax criterion, no, we don't see very many that are good. I think this, this current season has been appalling for new players, as a matter of fact. I can think of one good one. But, um, but no, that, that's unusually bad, but it's not that extraordinarily bad. And I am not one of those who says, oh, the problem is they aren't being workshopped enough or being workshopped properly. Maybe we overrate the idea of workshops. The director who more or less got the idea of workshops off the ground in Britain, Max Stafford Clark, once said he wished he'd never done it because it's given rise to the phrase to workshop, <laughs> which means a way of helping limping plays onto the stage that shouldn't have been there in the first place. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting that you can't um, you know, see the weaknesses of something by putting it in front of people. Uh, but um, the, the idea that the workshop is an infallible way of getting something onto the stage and if it doesn't, and if it doesn't happen, and it's still bad when it gets that it's in some way somebody's fault who should have spotted what was wrong with it. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I just can't see that. Um, any theatre that devotes itself to doing mostly new plays is going to end up doing 90% junk. And that's the fact of human nature, human experience. Um, mercifully, I mean, interpretative talent is a little more common than creative talent, using both those words very loosely. So, as Richard has pointed out, acting is actors will very often make an evening worthwhile and designers will as well and directors well who knows unless you were at rehearsal you actually don't know that's um, I mean that that's one of my pet peeves about uh, theatre criti uh, present company excluded of course but, 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 but theatre criticism in Canada that it, it places it worships directors and then the god that failed it, it, it jumps on them when they, when they don't deliver as if they were some kind of magicians or something and and very often they they are blamed for not doing things they're not capable of uh, and that nobody would be capable of. Uh, but it, it works the other way too. I've seen directors overpraise and perfectly good actors faulted for not living up to the exalted standard of their visionary directors and I always have my doubts whether the director in question is actually a visionary at all. But um, no, never, never, never mind about that. Um, so I'll, um, I'll, go, I'll go with Richard on saying that um, there aren't that many good new plays. Uh, there are there are a lot of a lot of good actors. Uh, I'm not sure what I know. Oh, I'll say one other thing though. What you said, we we will see the play and we say, how come they never spotted it? 
Well, for God's sake, you've worked in the theatre, so have I. <laughs> <laughs> and we've both got things on the stage. We, we, I suppose, ideally, we should have seen what was wrong, which you don't. You're too close to it. And also, it's not even that. It's the whole machine starts working, and you can't stop it. Um, there's a first night there. You don't actually abort something while it's on its way there, even if somewhere inside you, you know you should. And before you actually go into rehearsal, you can't really know. And so I'm not surprised that a lot of things don't work. It doesn't make it any nicer to be watching them when they don't, but philosophically, I'm, I'm not going to get too exercised about it. No, and one of the things also that is we run into the time problem in terms and previews, where I ideally feel in the platonic thing that you know the audience is one of the most important ingredients in the creation of a play, and the audience is often given short shrift. A lot of our theaters open with one or two previews. Uh, I mean, Can Stage opens major new plays, major new musicals, with three previews after about four days of tech, which is ridiculous. I mean, ideally, you should be able to get the show up and running smoothly and then have, if you could afford it, a couple of weeks of audiences so that you could learn how things work. But we instead spend money on workshops. We spend money on other things instead of an extra week of rehearsal, an extra two weeks of rehearsal, an extra week of previews, an extra week of tech, things that might make you be able to see the show in better perspective. That wouldn't be a fix-all to everything, but I, if people were willing to work properly, they'd hear what an audience was saying. If 14 audiences told them that second act curtain was boring, then they ought to fix it. But if it's only three previews and you're still clamoring to figure out how to make the show work, you have no idea what's going on. All right, well, I think we'll just we'll, uh, jump back into it. I just have one more question, then we're going to open it up to the floor for questions from the audience. Um, our gracious hosts here tonight are the Theatre Museum of Canada, or Theatre Museum Canada. Quickly, I mean, how, how do each of you think a museum for theatre might actually contribute to the scene in Canada? I want all the people who want to do a theatre museum in Toronto to go to the theater museum in London, England, and do the exact opposite. <laughs> I hate that place. Uh, it, it's been in existence for 20 years. Uh, they are now in peril of closing because they have applied for uh, a heritage grant, two heritage grants, to renovate it, to improve it, and it's been refused. So it looks like it might have to go back to where it was, which was the Victorian Albert Museum. The, the theater museum is in a basement in Covent Garden in a building that used to be a flower building. So we've got rising damp and things like that. When I first went in there, the most intriguing thing in there was the ticket taker, who looked like he was about 95 years old and he was fascinating. The exhibits I found were uh, too dark. They were crammed into long cases with very little explanation. The explanation was not under every uh, uh, thing that was exhibited. They had the, the costumes from Equus, which were fantastic. They had a wonderful frock from, from My Fair Lady. But you had to go back to the front of the case to read the explanation of things at the end of the case. They had pictures, theatrical pictures, in glared glass. They were behind pianos. I wasn't a happy person. I tried, I tried to like it. I went back three times over three successive years. I haven't been back since. Um, the Theatre Museum, you know, we've got a really young history. And so if we have our artifacts, if, as, as Kate said, we have had six exhibits. We can, ha we can celebrate our designers, uh, the various productions that have gone on. Uh, it can give theater students a sense of what our history was like. It could give them a sense of what George Luscombe who was he? This can tell you who he was. It can tell you about the beginnings. It can tell you about our Stratford and Shaw. It can give them a sense of our history. That's why it's important. Don't do what they did in London. <laughs> I think as much as we could, we should try to borrow an example from the Billy Rose Performing Arts Library at Lincoln Center in New York, where you can go and see rough archival videos of shows and they've cleared all this with equity you know they're those really not great looking ones but do you want to know what this play looked like 
you can sit there and read and see it. Do you want to read the reviews? Do you want to look at the programs? Do you want to look at the articles? Do you want to look at the ads? Do you want to look at pictures of it, costume sketches? Try to capture as much.